Hey guys, this is Maliha from the Side Blogger, and today I have a tutorial on how to design a wordmark logo for your Substack publication using Canva. So, a couple of things Substack publication, a wordmark logo using Canva. That's it. So let's see, um, some of you know that I have a new Substack publication called What Do I Write Today? Um, this is the one that you see right now on the screen. And I designed the wordmark logo for this publication using Canva. And for those of you who don't know, a wordmark logo is just a logo that's typed out. Um, it's just the name of um, the website or the business or the publication or whatever, it's simply typed out, plain text, that's it. That's called a wordmark logo. So this is my wordmark logo for uh, my Substack. It's called What Do I Write Today? And I designed it with Canva. Let me zoom in a little bit so I can show you what it looks like closed up. There you go. So this is what the logo looks like. So even though it's typed out, it doesn't mean that it can be a little bit fancy. So for example, as you can see, um, this is the name of the publication, What Do I Write Today? And then I have a second line that says by Maliha. And I have a little bit of, um, I don't know, it's kind of thin, so it might be hard to see in the video, but there's a little squiggly line going. So let me show you on the Canva and this is the logo so it may be easier to see now excuse me my voice is breaking so yeah the squiggly line is just something that uh, is available on canvas Ele elements library so yeah it's it's actually it's a simple logo um, it's just one text box, then a second text box, and that squiggly line, and that's it. So this is what the logo looks like when I upload it on Substack. So, cool so far, I think. And in today's video, we're just going to design something similar using Canva, and I will just show you some, um, I will give you some quick tips to make it look as nice as possible. And that's it. And before I go, um, another thing that I want to point out, typically, usually, I recommend that you design your logo using something like Illustrator, like Adobe Illustrator, because Illustrator can handle, um, how should I put it, subtle design things better than Canva. So just to show you what I mean, my primary blog, the side blogger, the logo, I, I designed that with um, Illustrator. So let me zoom in and show you. This logo has a lot going on, even though it doesn't look like it. So for example, um, if you look at the word side, this one right here, the word side, the I in the word side is actually not on the same level as the rest of the words in that, uh, rest of the letters in that word. It's a little depressed. So if you look at the level, uh, if you look at the under um, line, it's like the letters S, D, and E are all sitting on the same line, but the I is kind of depressed. It's, it's sitting below the rest of the letters. And the same goes with the letter G in the word blogger. The first letter G is depressed. Um, it's, it's sitting below the other letters in that word. So those are, you know, subtle things that you can do with Illustrator more easily than with Canva. So even though Adobe Illustrator itself is more complex um, to handle, for things like, you know, manipulating letters and, subtle design things. Those are things that's actually, um, I wouldn't say easier, but more convenient to do with something like Illustrator. But if you don't have anything sophisticated like that going on, if you just want to stick with something simple, 
then you can actually do that with Canva pretty easily, like the one that I have, this one. Um, and simple isn't bad, you know, simple can be quite nice, actually. Um, so my logo, What Do I Write Today by Maliha, that's not the nicest logo, I would admit, but it's okay, you know, it's okay. But for example, uh, here's another one, Austin Kleon. Um, now, Austin Kleon, it's his Substack publication, and Austin Kleon is an artist, so I'm assuming he probably designed his logo in Illustrator, and he probably didn't even use a regular font. It's entirely possible that he, um, it's, it's a handwritten um, font sort of thing going on. Um, but still, my point is, you can still do pretty cool things while keeping the design simple. Um, so anyway, uh, I don't know what you think about my logo, What Do I Write Today by Maliha, but I think it's okay. You know, I think it's fine. So let's do something simple, but something nice with Canva today. But before we can do that, first thing we need to know is, um, first thing we need to know um, are the dimensions of your logo. Now, every uh, website, every platform has their own specifications, and Substack is not different. So let's find out what we need to do for Substack. So uh, let's get back to original viewing dimensions. Okay, so now let's go to Dashboard on Substack, and then click Settings, and then scroll down to where the word mark logo is right here. And let me zoom in again. And it says right here um, the dimension that it has to be. It says it should be at least 1344 by 256 pixels with a maximum aspect ratio of 21 by 4. Now, you don't have to worry about mas maximum aspect ratio at, the po at this point. Um, I just want you to create a design that's exactly 1344 by 256 pixels. So if you go to Canva, click create a design and then click custom size from the bottom right here and input the width and the height now i was playing around with the with the substack logo earlier so it's already showing me 1344 by 256 make sure it's pixels and then hit create new design again and that should open up a new design that's exactly the dimension that you need it to be. Now, here's a quick tip for designing um, a wordmark logo for Substack that's legible. Because you want to be able to read it. So if I go back to my original aspect ratio, being aspect ratio. See, it's actually not a big logo. Let me let me show you a couple other Substack publications just to just to give you an idea. So this is popular information. Um, it's a Substack publication that I follow, and they have a very simple wordmark logo, and it's it's pretty legible. And legibility has to do with the size, and also your choice of fonts. Now here's another one, Platformer. This one is also pretty legible. Um, and obviously Austin Kleon, um, his is also very legible. You can, you can easily read it. Now my logo, my Substack logo, it's actually, <laughs> to be honest with you, um, I think I'm going to redo the logo at some point because I feel like it's not as legible as I want it to be because it feels a little too busy to me. And also I made a mistake of choosing a name for my publication that's way too long. So, you know, if you want to um, keep the aspect ratio to their um, recommended aspect ratio, then sticking all that, all those words, like what do I write today? That, those are too many words, too many letters. It becomes a little difficult to create a, a simple wordmark design on Canva um, that's super legible, you know? So um, that's a mistake I made and tip, Another tip, if you're creating your Substack publication, choose a, choose a name that's not too many words, you know? Maybe like two words, three words max, 
or something like that. You know, just just pick something, pick a small name. Um, I made the mistake of choosing a really long name, and that made my life really difficult when I was trying to design a logo. So anyway, right now it's an okay logo. I might change it um, at some point in the future. But that's just you know just that, that's just a tip for you. If you're just starting out a Substack publication, choose a name that's kind of short. Um, your life will be a lot easier. Anyway, let's get back to the design. So the goal here is to choose a font that's easy to read and also try to uh, fill out the entire um, height of the design. Not so much the width, but the height because legibility depends on uh, the legibility of a wordmark logo kind of depends on the height. Um, so yeah, not necessarily the width. So to keep things simple, let's just choose a font that's kind of on the long side so that it takes up as much of the height as possible. All right, so first things first, hit the T key on your keyboard to add a text box, or you can just hit the text tab right here and then click add a text box. That works too. Anyway, we don't need two text box, just one. And then type the name of your publication. Now, um, let's try my publication name. What do I write today? Now, let me show you what I mean when I say um, legibility. If I make it as big as possible by dragging the corners of this text box with my mouse, by holding the corner and then dragging, See, it's not taking up, because it's such a long name, it's not taking up the entire height of my design. So when it's, when it's smaller, when you upload it on Substack, it's going to be a lot smaller, as you can see, and it becomes a little difficult to read. You can still read it, like I can still read it, but it's just a little difficult. So... Yeah, if I had a shorter name, it would have been life would have been a lot easier. So, for example, instead of um, doing the whole thing like "What do I write today?" If I have something like "Just write today," then I can make it as big as possible, and it takes up as much of the height as I want, like so. And yeah, it's it's just gonna be a lot easier to read when you upload something like that, you know. Um, just just to kind of see what it looks like, let's um, let's download it and upload it and see what this looks like. I bet that it's going to be a lot easier to read than what I have right now. So um, let's download it. Click share and then download. Now here's another thing: when you're downloading a logo, make sure that it's the file type is PNG, and also make sure to choose transparent background check transparent background option now if you're on canva a free canva account you are not going to be able to choose transparent background because it's a canva pro feature so make sure that you're on canva pro if you're designing a logo with canva because if your logo doesn't have transparent background it's just going to be it's just going to look very amateurish and it's not going to be nice um, professional logos all have transparent backgrounds so um, what I'm going to do is I will um, link to a Canva Pro trial account in the description of this video. It's my affiliate link. And if you use that affiliate link to sign up for Canva Pro, it will give you 45 days of free Canva Pro. Um, so, you know, if you want to just design a logo quickly and you don't need to sign up for um, Canva Pro, you, you don't want to pay for it, um, the link below this video that will give you 45 days of Canva Pro for totally free just just a heads up anyway so make sure to choose PNG and transparent background and then click download that will download the design on your computer and then go to Substack and then I'm just gonna download it just for the heck of it um, I will click replace word mark and then I will choose the logo that I just downloaded and let's see what it looks like. 
see, it already looks so much better. It's just easier to read, you know. So legibility depends on choosing a font that's good, that's easy to read, but also how big it is in terms of its height. Not so much its width, width its height. The bigger the height, the better. But anyway, that's not the name of my publication, unfortunately. So let's just go back to something like、uh, let's just go back to what I had originally. Yeah, see, it's just it's just it's just make things small. So you know, if you're starting your publication,、um, choose a short name. That's that's the best tip I can give you. But yeah, other than that,、um, you know. The tip here is to just、um, just make sure to choose a good font, and don't try to go to second line. Second, that just makes things more difficult.、Um, you don't want two lines in such a short, cramped space,、uh, right? Like I have right now.、Um, but you just want a single line is better. So that now because I can't really do about anything about the name because I already chose it.、Um, what I can do is I can choose a different font that's、um, that's kind of like a narrow font but kind of on the long side. So I was playing around with it earlier, and I decided that the font Anton, for example. Is a good font to use because, as you can see, it's、um, it's kind of a narrow font, but it's on the kind of on the longer side, so I can actually make it bigger. Be just because of the choice of the font, like so, and also make sure that it's centered.、Um, the text box is centered, like that, so that when you download, you know you want. The logo to be centered and looking nice, so that font is okay. It's not my favorite, but it's okay.、Um, and I'm not gonna spend too much time going through lots of different fonts because I don't want this tutorial to be too long. But I just want you to give you an idea of what you're looking for. You're looking for a font that's easy to read, and you're looking for a font.、Um, That's gonna take up the entire design height, height of the entire design as much as possible, and it's gonna be easier if you have a short name for your publication. If it's a long name, like I do, what do I write today? That's super long. Then it becomes a little more difficult to fit all of those words in a single line within the given within the given dimensions, the required dimensions. So, tip number one: choose a short name. Tip number two: choose a good good font that's easy to read. Tip number three: fill up as much of the height as possible, and keep your logo in a single line. That's it. That's all you have to remember to create a decent word mark logo on Canva. And then, when you're ready, download it. And make sure to choose your download settings properly. Choose PNG file type; that's usually the default, so it should be good. And then make sure to check transparent background, and then hit download. And that's it. That's the tutorial.、Um, that's how you create a wordmark logo、um, using Canva for your Substack publication. Hopefully that was easy enough to follow. And、um, if you're already if you already know a lot about designing and logo design and whatnot,、um, this tutorial is probably pretty rudimentary to you, and you don't have much need for it. But I created this tutorial for those of you who are not designers and you're trying to create something decent looking for your Substack publication.、Um, in that case, hopefully this tutorial will help you create something nice for your Substack. That's it for today, and I will see you in a different video sometime soon. Bye.